Hi everyone, we're back on the 67 Hail Hail channel with another video today. The videos just keep coming and thankfully from my point of view and the channel's point of view, so do the subscribers. We're absolutely flying in terms of subscribers and views at the moment and I'll take this little moment to do my just about weekly shout out for you if you're a watcher of our videos and you've not yet managed to subscribe yet. I think it's still around about the 75% mark of our views are from non-subscribers. So if you're in that three quarter range and you support Celtic and you want more Celtic content, daily free Celtic content, then why not just click subscribe? We regularly have Jack and McNamara on with us twice a week. We've got these solo videos from me. We've also got post-match live reactions with me, John McGinley, David Walton, right after pretty much every Celtic game. That reminds me quickly, we won't be on after the game on Thursday. I'm not getting to see the match on Thursday. Perhaps that's good luck. Um, perhaps that's a good thing that I'm not getting to see Celtic on Thursday. But no post-match reaction then. I will be back on Friday with a video after the Leo game though. So look forward to that. If you don't want to miss out on that and any other videos coming up on the channel, please subscribe. We're trying to get to 10k by the end of the year. It's going to be a tough ask but with your help, we can make it. Right, that's the public service announcement over. Let's get on to today's video. Now, there's so many debates going on about Celtic at the moment. The vast majority of them are negative. The vast majority of them are really heated. The main one that's causing all the debate, most of the debate anyway, is around our manager, is it time for Neil Lennon to go as Celtic manager or is he just going through a little bit of a blip at the moment that he'll be able to turn around? We did discuss this, me, John and Jack and McNamara last week. I'll link that up there if you want to check that out. Um, we gave some good views on that. However, that was prior to both the AC Milan and Aberdeen games. So I'm going to offer a bit of an updated spin on things. I'm going to try and give both viewpoints. There's obviously two pretty entrenched camps at the moment. You've got the people who want Neil Lennon out and you've got the people um, who think that he can turn it around and he should not be sacked and it's completely knee-jerk reaction. Now, if one's here and one's here, I'm probably just about here at the moment. Not right over, but um, I am definitely leaning towards the fact that we need new management to get us through this season um, and to, to get us to where we want to be. But I'm going to try and offer both of those viewpoints in as non-biased and impartial way as I possibly can, but I'll try and give my opinion as well. Right, we're going to start with some of the numbers. Okay, we're consigning this to Neil Lennon's second stint as Celtic boss, so since he arrived at the club when Brendan Rodgers left to go down and do snaky things down at Leicester City, now, Neil Lennon has won four trophies for us. He's also got us in the semi-final for last season's Scottish Cup, which we play against Aberdeen on Sunday afternoon at Hamden. Four trophies he's won, two of them completely by himself, two were partly helped by his predecessor. In that time, he's played 52 Scottish Premiership matches. He's won 41 of them, he's drawn seven, and he's lost four. Now, I would say that's a pretty good record. However, of those four defeats, three of them have come against our rivals, Rangers. In total, he's gone up against Steven Gerrard and his side six times. He's won three of the matches and lost three with obviously no draws. However, out of those six games... He's been dominated in four of them, probably five. Um, the game I'm talking about was the one when Morelos was sent off at Parkhead when we won 2-1. I think it was Lennon's first game against Steven Gerrard. We were probably the better team in the first half. They were the better team in the second half. So I'll mark that down as a 50-50 match, even though they played the vast majority of it with 10 men. The other game, Artuna win at Ibrox. He was the better manager. We were the better team. But for four of the six games, he's been completely dominated by Rangers and by Steven Gerrard. That's a major worry. Added to that, his European record, he's had real black marks against his name with the defeats at home to Cluj, at home to Verenge Varos this season, and Copenhagen as well. Presenting both sides of the argument, you also have to mention the fact that we had a great Europa League group stage campaign last season. We exceeded all expectations, did the double over Lazio, took four points from six against Rennes, two teams that would go on to qualify for this season's Champions League group stage and are both doing okay so far. So there's good points and bad points there, but certainly more bad points than good, I would suggest. 
Moving on to this season, we've played 16 games in all competitions so far. I would argue there's been five positive, good performances. Hamilton Ackies, K.R. Reykjavik, Motherwell, Hibernian and Ross County. Now, four of those were at Celtic Park. The other 11 games have ranged from average games that we've won but not been entirely convincing like the Livingston home game to absolutely diabolical performances a la Rangers at home, away to Riga, away to St Johnson, Dundee United, AC Milan. I could keep going to be honest but the facts are that, in my opinion, so it's not really a fact, but the opinions are that 11 of our 16 games this season our performances range from average to poor. That's not good enough. So at the moment, we find ourselves six points behind our rivals. We do have a game in hand, which is at home to Aberdeen. So no gimmies there. But if we were to win that game, we would only be three points behind Rangers. Does that tell the whole story, though? I'm going to bring in some comments made by the BBC's Tom English. Uh, he was commenting on BBC Sports Sound on Monday night. He said a number of things. He said that Celtic fans have become entitled. Some Celtic fans, not all, but he says that some Celtic fans have become entitled. He said that they can't tolerate a little dip, was what he's quoted as saying, from their team. And also they can't tolerate the notion of Rangers being able to challenge us. I would challenge a lot of those comments. I would say that this isn't a little dip from Celtic this season. I've listed the amount of games there, 16 of them, um, the vast majority of them have been really poor performances this year. It's not a team that's playing to its you know, maximum capacity, far from it. Yes, we are only a little bit behind Rangers, You know, six points with a game in hand. We should be far further behind. We've scored late goals to win games at Tannadice and St Johnson, games that we should have drawn 0-0 in all honesty. Added to that, Livingston missed a golden chance at Parkhead in the last minute of that game last month, I think it was, to get a 3 all draw. These are games that we could conceivably not have won. We could be sitting 12 points behind our rivals at the moment. And added to all of that, they have had far harder fixtures than us so far. They've been to Pataudry, they've been to Motherwell, they've been to Hibs, they've been to Livingston, and of course they've been to visit us at Celtic Park. Of all of those venues, we've only been to Pataudry. That was our first major test last weekend and we failed it. We didn't win the match. In the next couple of months, we will go to Easter Road, tough. We'll go to Fir Park, tough. We'll go to Livingston, probably the toughest of the lot. And of course, we go to Ibrooks as well, a game that I'm absolutely dreading. So we have far harder fixtures to come. We're already behind in the league and it could be so much worse. Added to that, we've got three more derbies to go. Two of them are away from home and I dread to think what could happen in those games if the team is playing like this and still has Neil Lennon in charge. That's a big fear for me. So you can look at the table and say that we're only three points behind in theory if we win a game in hand. For me, that only tells not even half the story. That tells a third of the story. Tom English says we're only two points worse off than we were at this stage of last season. That's correct. After 11 games this season, we've got 26 points. That's eight wins, two draws and a defeat. Last season, we'd won nine of our first 11, drawn one and lost one, so we're two points better off, 28 points last season, 26 this season. That's all fair. What I would say is that last season we'd scored seven goals against St. Johnson, we'd scored five away to Motherwell, we'd scored six against Ross County, we'd gone to Aberdeen and won 4-0, we'd also gone to Ibrooks and won comparison to this season and those results just aren't there to be seen. Our best result would be Ross County 5-0 away this season. And that was a kind of little bit of a concern in performance defensively, despite winning that game 5-0. After that surprise 2-0 loss to Livingston near the start of last season, we then went on an 11-game winning run up until the game against Rangers in New Year. This season, when we get a similar 2-0 defeat at home to Rangers, we then fail to win our very next Premiership match. So... Again, there's worrying signs there for me. Tom English also cited the fact that we're missing key players, Odson Edward, James Forrest, Christopher Julian. 
I would argue that when those guys were all fit and firing at the start of the season, we were just as bad. The only difference was that we weren't facing great sides. This is the same level of performance we've seen all season from Celtic, barring a couple of games, but the difference is that now we're playing against better teams who expose our weaknesses. Tom English also says that some Celtic fans are bedwetting. I would argue to the contrary that we are just aware of where the team is at at the moment, how we're performing, and we see this incredibly difficult run of fixtures and a lot of us are very fearful that we could be waving goodbye to 10 in a row by Christmas time if it goes that way. Now people may laugh at that comment I've just made but when you look at our next two league away games and it's Easter Road and Fur Park, do you have any faith in this Celtic team winning those two games? I certainly don't. We've also got to go to Livingston, we've got to go to Rangers before the end of the year. Again, I don't have any faith in us winning those games. I could see us being out of the title race if we keep performing like this. It's um, it's really concerning, and I think for Tom English to say that we're bedwetting just is completely ignorant to the whole situation. Now, to be fair to our gaffer, he has had these horrible so-called nadirs before, and he's been able to to you know, rise above it and really turn the team down. People were calling for his head after the loss to Cluj last season in the Champions League. Ditto after the defeat to Rangers at New Year. And he managed to turn it around. For me, it feels different this time. It's further gone. I've commented on that before. Um, I don't sense the same togetherness and fight from the team to want to prove people wrong maybe that just comes from winning so often it's a really tough one um, I wonder if the fire's there from Neil Lennon you saw how he reacted when we went 3-2 up at Pataudry on Sunday a strange bizarre reaction Neil Lennon of old would be roaring up the touchline I know there's no fans there maybe that's affecting him but surely I was going 2-1 down at Pataudry, then scoring two goals in two minutes was cause for him to at least stand up and give it a fist pump rather than just sitting there dejected like he was the whole game. It was strange. His comments on Tuesday's press conference saying that he's no, he shouldn't be close to being sacked, standing up for himself, are uplifting definitely, but are our problems at Celtic down to more than simply Neil Lennon not being up for it or, or being up for it? Are our problems, you know, more substantial than that? Is it a tactical problem? Is it a player um, happiness problem? Are our key players motivated enough? These are all questions that we don't really know the answer to because we're not privy to what goes on at Lennox Town in the corridors at Celtic Park. But it's really concerning looking from a supporter's point of view. This isn't a knee-jerk reaction from me. I have been on the fence, on the brink with regards to wanting to say that Neil Lennon should go or has to go for the past six weeks. And I've really not wanted to do it, but it's reached a stage for me where the way the team's performing, game after game, has been so disappointing. When are they going to turn it around? Is it going to be Thursday night away to Lille? Maybe. I would doubt it, though, against such a good team. I think we're looking at another defeat there, I hate to say it. Sunday against Aberdeen at Hamden. Is that the game when we turn it around? I can only speak for myself, but I'd much rather we were playing in the Premiership as opposed to last season's Scottish Cup this weekend. Who knows, maybe winning that trophy could be exactly what the team needs to, to kick on. Brendan Rodgers always spoke about the Betfred Cup being the most important trophy of the season because it gave his players a tangible reward for their start to the season efforts. It's a bit different this year with COVID and everything, obviously, and the way the Scottish Cup's been played and when it's been played. Could it act in the same way? Who knows? I just feel something badly has to change at the club um, and I don't know exactly what it is that has to change. Is it the players have to you know, rise amongst themselves and say this isn't good enough and our star men, once they return from injury, have to you know, step up and be counted or is it that the management simply isn't good enough and that's what needs to change? For me, I've said it before that I think Neil Lennon's had too many strikes. Um, I don't think that argument I say is helped by so many people, you know, using phrases like bedwetting and reactionary. Um, I think this has been based on a, a lot of games this season. The team isn't going the right direction with Neil Lennon. And in such a huge season, we cannot afford to let things die out. It would be the worst thing ever for me in the 10 in a row season if we ended up, you know, been out of the title race by February or March. And... It's a bit of a concern at the moment. It's a massive concern the way the team's performing and the games have got to come um, over the next month that we go to Ibrox and lose that and are maybe double figure points behind them or waving goodbye to the league. That's why for me, the club has to act now. They have to make a change 
Um, will they? Absolutely no chance. So I guess this video has been kind of pointless in a way. Maybe it's not because you've been watching. I appreciate you doing that. Remember to subscribe. I'm sure you'll let me know uh, in the comments what you think of my points. I've probably made some good ones, probably made a lot more bad ones. Let me know. It's really appreciated, guys, and we'll speak soon.